just wanted to hop on live and give you all an update on how we are doing this morning in the Mitchell household after the unprecedented attack from Iran last night, or actually, I guess it was early this morning. Okay. We did not sleep very well. <laughs> um, I guess that probably goes without saying, but if you're unaware, I don't think most of you are, but if you are, we had uh, an unprecedented attack from Iranian soil against Israel around 1.45 in the morning. Um, they sent in drones, ballistic missiles, um, something else. I can't remember. But they sent in three different types of weapons. I'm sorry, I don't remember. I'm very sleepy. <laughs> And our missile defense systems were amazing in, in their effectiveness. They ended up uh, taking down 99% of everything that came in via the Iron Dome, David Sling, and the Aero Defense System, as well as the Israeli Air Force and the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy and also uh, some other European um allies and Jordan was also shooting things down as well. So if you know where Iran is on the map, the weapons that they sent in crossed airspace of three different nations, Iraq, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia. So we're not really sure exactly where this is going and what Israel's response will be. Right now, it's looking like the Biden administration is saying that they think that we should accept the success of our operations and preventing this attack from causing any real damage to be, um, you know, just the success of the mission without retaliation. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to suit the Israeli people well and sit well here. Um, I think people here would like for us to just go ahead and take out their missile, to missile um, systems, their ballistic missile, missile systems over in Iran and their drone facilities in Iran. Um, so we'll see where this goes. I did see a report from Avi Abelo that the prime minister's plane left early this morning, but I haven't been able to verify that anywhere else. So I will let you all know if I see more about where BB is. Um, but just to kind of give you a better sense of what was happening here for us, because um, I went back and I watched the live video that I made in the um, shelter last night, and I can kind of piece it together a bit more for you all. I was the only one in the family awake. My husband, Devin, and the kids were all sleeping, and I was just awake. Um, I had just done an interview with Pastor Brian Rogers uh, from Greenville, North Carolina. And I was trying to decide if I wanted to stay up and see what was going to happen or if it was worth it to try to get some sleep and then just get up if there was a siren. And um, just as I was like, I think I'll go to sleep, I started noticing that there was explosions happening in Jerusalem that I could hear and I could actually see the flashes of light. So I went to the window and I saw people running down the sidewalk and yelling. So I walked to the bedroom to tell Devin, I thought maybe it was a good idea if we just all went ahead and went downstairs. And uh, I woke him up and he was groggy and just kind of hearing, like just trying to piece together what I was saying. And even as I was in the bedroom, I was still hearing explosions through our bathroom window. Uh, our, you know, our bathrooms in Israel don't have the fans to help with the moisture. So we all have a window in our bathroom and the window always stays open, right? So I was hearing the explosions and just as he was kind of waking up, Devin, as he was kind of waking up, um, the siren went off. And so then at that point it was like, you know, we have to go down. <laughs> it's not a matter of like deciding what to do. It's like we go. So we got the dog and the kids and we all ran down and stayed for a while. Um, the booms were extremely loud. On the way down, actually, our oldest, Aviel, 
he saw uh, the interceptions happening and he watched the explosions. And I do remember Devin being like, don't stand. He said something like, don't just stand there and look at it. Get down the stairs. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, so we did get downstairs and we just waited. I was really afraid, actually. Like, that was the most I had felt fear um, from sirens. When this war started, I had a lot of fear dealing with uh, the reality that the terrorists had actually, like, broken into people's houses in the ground invasion. But the, um, the sirens didn't necessarily cause me to fear. But this time, I think because I heard... I was hearing the explosions around and I didn't, at that point, I didn't know exactly what it was. I didn't, in my mind, I'm actually thinking we're um, dealing with um, maybe suicide bombs because there had been a large group of people on Temple Mount at al and the Dome of the Rock watching the drones on their phones. And I had seen that video footage and um, I didn't know if maybe, you know, people had left and they were attacking on the ground. I wasn't sure. Um, and so when we got in there, I was just shaking it, which I guess was also from the adrenaline rush. But my hands were shaking. And I don't mean like small shaking. I mean, like I was like shaking. <laughs> and so were my legs. <laughs> Uh, so we did wait for all the booms to finish and it caused the ground to shake. It was really intense. Um, we waited to, for them to finish before we decided how we were going to move forward. And I did find a video that I posted on my Facebook. I'll show you all. There's a video of the, these are ballistic missiles from Iran coming over Temple Mount. So I'll show you this. Um, let's see. I, this is why I actually prefer pre-filming videos and editing because I don't, I can do all this so much more smooth and I'm not clumsy. Um, cause I'd like to be able to play it and now I can't find where I put it. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Okay, here we go. My dog just got up because she could hear the sirens from this video. Hey, sweet girl, we're not running. <laughs> she knows what that means. Okay. So that's how it looked. And I was seeing some of that from the house. Um, of course, that's not, that was on, someone was filming that from Temple Mount, but we, our walking distance to Temple Mount and I was seeing the flashes and hearing the booms from my uh, living room from exactly where I'm sitting right now. Uh, so it was really wild and I didn't, I didn't even know, you know, I was like looking at my phone, seeing the red alerts come in and I was not sure what exactly it was that what I was seeing, you know, I didn't know like, are these rockets coming in from, Hezbollah and Gaza, like, did they all orchestrate to do this at the same time? Is this from Iran? You know, I just didn't really know what was going on. I just knew I was hearing explosions and drones were coming over <laughs> and they should have been arriving about this time. You know, um, it was just really wild and surreal and strange. So in the aftermath of last night, though, what we know, uh, we do know that the Iron Dome was extremely successful. Iron Dome, um, David Sling, and Aero Missile Defense were extremely successful. No Israelis um, were killed in the attack. Uh, there was a Bedouin girl who was between either age 7 or 10. I've seen different reports. And I, I'm understanding right now that she is in critical condition at the hospital shrapnel fell on their home. I saw some reports that that um, it was a 10 year old who had died, but I think the updated reports were actually that she didn't die, that she's in critical condition. So I hope that's all. I hope she's okay. Um, so we need to do, pray, we do need to pray for this Bedouin girl uh, to make it. Um, if that is the accurate report, I'm not really sure. Um, 
Also, I think one thing that's been really amazing is seeing all of the support from the Iranian Christians and the Iranian people. They do not want this evil regime in place. And rather than saying, you know, is the Israelis are going to attack us and, you know, like all the things that we get from um, the Palestinian people and Palestinian Christian leadership, um, the Iranians are standing solid with Israel and they want us to take out this regime. So I, I think that speaks a lot to their understanding of terrorism and um, even it sheds some light on the political motives of some of the Palestinian leadership that you see, like uh, Mother Isaac, who Tucker Carlson just recently interviewed. And I'm hoping to do a show on that for you all, because I'd like to break down better what Munther believes. Uh, but just looking at this this morning and seeing the huge amount of support that we have from Iranians, like Iranians stand with Israel is trending on X, right? And seeing that, I was like, they're on the right side of history. And then I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, no, they're on the righteous side of history, you know, and that is reality. Um, they are. They know how evil their regime is. They know the regime is responsible for funding Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and Hezbollah. They know that they are the head of terrorism in the Middle East, and they do not want them. They're not saying, you know, Israeli strikes against this regime is going to cause civilian deaths. They're not joining in that propaganda game. They're speaking what's truth, and they're speaking it with courage. And uh, I applaud them, and I've just been kind of trying to, like, tweet back at them that I'm standing with them. <laughs> uh, but this is how it's been um, throughout the 20th century as well. You know, the German church had, um, like the German nationalist church, they stood with Hitler and they supported the Holocaust. The people who were hiding the Jewish people in their homes, actually, uh, many of them actually called themselves Darbyites, and they held to the teaching of the restoration of Israel. And, um, you know, they believed that God's plan for the Jewish people was ongoing and his Abrahamic covenant with them stood. So having replacement theology really made a difference in the direction that people went during the Holocaust. And the same holds true here, like Isaac Munther for, or Munther Isaac, sorry, for example, um, that Tucker interviewed, he holds to replacement theology and Palestinian liberation theology, you know. So that influences the way that he thinks about this and the way that a lot of people in um, within the Palestinian Christian movement uh, understand what's going on. And so we just have a stark contrast happening from the Iranian Christians who are applauding Israel, standing with Israel and hoping that Israel will retaliate in some capacity. So um, just kind of file that away. I'm hoping to actually flesh this out in writing a bit more, um, hopefully today after I get a nap, because I feel like this idea of being on the righteous side of history is really resonating in my spirit as something from the Lord that we need to talk about. <laughs> okay, so we don't know where this is headed. We don't know what Israel's plan is going to be in response. I can guarantee you that in the coming days, even though the world should wake up after this and see that Iran is every bit as evil and bad and and like slanted against Israel, uh, as we've been saying, what will inevitably happen is that it will turn, they'll say like, Israel caused this because they uh, hit sites in Damascus and because they they assassinated an Iranian. You know, Israel's intentionally escalating. There's going to be this propaganda that comes up. It's going to turn on Israel in the next few days. So we do want to encourage you all to continue to stand firm in what you know is true and to continue to pray for Israel. Uh, those of you in the United States, I would encourage you to write your senators and representatives and tell them what you believe to be right about how your government should stand with Israel at this time and not interfere with Israel's right to defend itself. Um, go let them know. 
And I hope that you all will be praying in your churches today for Israel because this, uh, this really just um, moved everything up a notch, basically, right? So we don't know where it's going again, and we're just kind of waiting. Right now it's quiet. Um, the kids are on break for Passover, so this hasn't interfered with any of their routines. I'm just kind of like, where, you know, do we go? We need to get outside at some point today, but where do we play, right? <laughs> where do we play? Do we go to this playground or do we go to this one so we're closer to home? You know, just kind of thinking through these things as a mom. But besides that, we're good. The kids um, are doing really well. They've just really wanted to look at the map and see where Iran was and understand how far everything traveled to get here. And um, they wanted to talk about it some. So, And they're just playing. So for me, it's just been a matter of checking in and making sure everyone's doing as well as they seem like they're doing and not burying any anxiety about it. We did not sleep last night. You know, it was really rough. Uh, we came... We did decide to come back upstairs because it looked like that was the orchestrated attack and that um, we were not going to get much more in Jerusalem uh, just by our estimation. So we came back upstairs. I slept in the living room on the couch with the girls. We watched a movie because we were not sleepy. We just had too much adrenaline. And then Yaniv and Devin slept in our room and Aviel felt fine to sleep in his room. So that is how we did it. But again, I didn't. I didn't sleep. <laughs> I'm so tired. I probably look really tired too. Um, so yeah, please do pray for Israel today at your churches. Uh, pray for the nations to be on the righteous side of history and for individuals to be on the righteous side of history because we know, uh, according to God's word, that at some point all nations will come against Jerusalem. So at some point, it's it's going to be more a battle for the individual than for the nation, right? So continue to pray that, and we're doing okay. We're just tired, and um, I will keep you all updated the best that I can. And here we are, back to doing, like, emergency live videos, <laughs> uh, old school style, right? Um, but I do want you all to know that we're okay, and we're just tired because it was a late night. And God is good. I mean, guys, you know, that was a massive attack and no fatalities and 99% shot down. Like that is the Lord. You know, he was working through humans, but that was God. That was, that was the answer to everyone's prayers. That was God demonstrating that he is fighting for Israel. Right. So amen. May the nation see the Lord vindicating the holiness of his name as he stands with this station. Okay, so I will check in with you guys as necessary, and I'm hoping to also do some better edited videos as well, talking about Palestinian liberation theology and such. Um, if you are watching on Facebook, it would be really helpful for me if you stop by my YouTube channel. You can find it, Callie Mitchell. I will not keep silent. I'll put a link in the show notes here uh, on Facebook. Um, but it does help if you go over there and you like and subscribe and comment. It, it helps my videos make the algorithm. So if you're watching on Facebook, please do that. It's one way that you can support our family and uh, Israel as a whole. And I'll check in as necessary. Thank you guys for standing with Israel and thank you for praying.